Farm Report will be heard over most MBS affiliate stations. Tonight, expect partly cloudy skies and another warm summer evening, leading to rain showers over most of the listening area tomorrow morning. The time is now 7.59 p.m. Coming up is a new adventure series from WDOX in New York on the MBS Regional Blue Network. Eagle Brand Cigarettes, the mildest, smoothest brand of smoking tobacco in the land, brings you Hidden Harbor Mysteries. Tonight's story takes us to the mysterious city of Hidden Harbor. It is a time of war and hardship for millions of Americans, many of whom live in a city of lies and corruption. But there are those who will fight for truth and justice in this hard, broken city. Heroes like the one you're about to meet. But before we do, I want to tell you about another kind of hero. Dr. Archibald Folsom of the University of New York, a prestigious medical institution, is one of our heroic veterans. Dr. Folsom was part of the last great war in Europe, aiding our French and British allies against the Kaiser's army. For his many awards and medals, Eagle Cigarettes salutes Dr. Folsom for his service. A lifelong smoker... Dr. Folsom has this to say about the health benefits of smoking Eagle brand tobacco. When I had time for a smoke up along the front lines, I was glad to find Eagle cigarettes in my care package. Smooth, refreshing, and satisfying, Eagle cigarettes gave me that extra lift to get back to my feet and to fight on. It is my opinion that there is no more healthier or more satisfying cigarette than Eagle Cigarettes. Ask for them at your pharmacy counter tomorrow. Thank you, Dr. Folsom. And now, to Hidden Harbor, a playground to the underworld, and by night, a hunting ground for predators and criminals. It is a city of light, beset by a cancer of darkness. Join us now in Hidden Harbor for a story called... The Wrong Turn. Did you enjoy the show, dear? It was a wonderful show, Thomas. And a wonderful evening, thank you. It's not often I see you in a suit. I enjoyed it. How about you, son? It was okay. I like the swords and the acrobats. But not the kissing. (laughs) Well, one day... I think you'll appreciate the kissing, too. (laughs) Ugh, more kissy. Eyes on the road, dear. Thomas, do you know where we're going? I thought the bridge out of town was near the theater. Well, it is. But the city has all those one-way streets, so I have to go east a bit to go west. Though now that you mention it, I've lost sight of the river. Why don't we stop and ask directions? I'm not sure this is a neighborhood where we want to stop. Dad, why are people burning stuff in barrels? To keep warm, Bruce. Can't they just go inside and light a fire in their fireplace? Dear, not everyone has a fireplace. Or a home. To be honest, I'd heard that things were getting bad in Hidden Harbor, but look at this place. Wow, people camp out here. They have tents and everything. It's like the newsreels of the war. This place is frightening, Thomas. How can people live this way? And so close to the theater district. People are staring, Thomas. Please, take us home. Take us home right away. I'm working on it, Martha. None of the stoplights are working, and I can't find any street signs, and... What's this? Men in the road. Lock your doors, sweetheart. Why? Do as your mother asks, Bruce. I'm not sure what they're doing. They just came out of nowhere. They're directing you left. Oh, good. Turn left here. Around this burned-out corner store, I hope this takes us back to Main Street. Don't hit anyone. There have to be a dozen men out there. Are they playing baseball? Some of them have baseball bats. I... There's no road here. Just an alley. And it's a dead end. I... Can you back up? Not without running over the men behind me. Don't open the window. Stay quiet, Martha. Hello. 
Would you mind lowering your window, please? Yes, of course. Oh, hello. We, uh, uh, appear to be lost. I sensed as much as you were coming up the road back there. My name is Michael. I'm part of the Neighbourhood Watch, sir. Lovely evening, isn't it? Uh, yes. And you are... Oh, of course. Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, Mrs. Young Man. How is it you be strolling through this part of town tonight? Well, we just left the theatre and we're on our way back to Quail Town. And I guess I missed the bridge. Quail Town? That's out in the countryside, isn't it? Been there once. Lovely place. Oh, thank you. I'm on the town council there. Well, good for you, sir. Good for you. Now let's see about getting you all back there straight on, right? Oh, good. Thank you so much. There's just a small matter of the toll, is all. Sorry? You're in Luddit, sir. Luddit employs the Night Watch to help keep it safe, and that's all we're doing. That applies to nice families such as yourself who use our roads. If you wouldn't mind, sir, we'll apply a toll here and guide you back to little old Quail Town, all warm and dry. Well, I can't put a price on your courtesy, Michael. How much is the toll? Five hundred dollars, sir. What? Excuse me, d did you say... Yes, sir. Since you are not on the Night Watch program of full coverage, there is a slightly higher deductible on the insurance we provide, particularly when you consider the value of the property and persons requiring protection. Wait. That's ridiculous. I don't carry that around with me, and even if I did, it's extortion. Ridiculous. I have fifty dollars. Thomas, fifty? Fifty dollars, which I'll happily share for directions home, sir. Well, that hardly covers my overhead, what with ten percent of the deductible. We do have the option where you can waive coverage altogether and be on your way. I would suggest that lacking our protection in this neighborhood may end up costing you far more than the deductible. You have a very pretty wife, sir. Thank you. And I presume the boy has very soft hands to match his face. No darkness in his eyes, neither. Fifty. And my watch. What do you want? Let me take it up with my adjuster, Mr. Spittle. Mr. Spittle, please. I have an issue here with our customer. Hello? Mr. Spittle doesn't speak much. He tends to shower people with his vocabulary, if you get my meaning, sir. He tends to speak with his hands. Please step out of the car, sir. I will not. Leave us alone. We've done nothing to you. We... Ah! Dad! Thomas! Put me down! Mr. Spittle is our adjuster. He will decide whether or not to approve any changes to the terms of our insurance policy. Again, you can choose to not file a claim and be on your way. But again, we're not responsible for your body. Or her body. Or the little knee-biter in the back, you sir. You're breaking my arm! Please, what is it that you want? As I said, five hundred dollars, sir. I see the missus is dressed to the nines this evening. She has some lovely baubles there, which might help us negotiate to a more fair deductible. Fine. Martha, give him your jewellery, your purse, turn it over. Fine. Please take it all. Take my purse. Take the car. Anything. Just let him go. Mommy, why is he hurting Daddy? Thank you, miss. Just take them off and leave them on the seat. I'll collect and appraise them presently. Now, once we have that, we can discuss terms for the balance. You can decide if we keep your wife or your boy until the remainder of the deductible is paid. 
Make sure you give it Come to him good. Come boss. Mom! Get your hands off me! Protection is expensive, you see. Stop. Uh, take my car. Let it's a 1947 Ford Roadster. Oh. Few miles. Excellent out. condition. Well, that's a fine offer, Thomas. <laughs> what you think, Mr. Spittle? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, sir. Mr. Spittle's not big on machines. He never could wrap his mind around the relative value of transportation. He prefers to go places on foot, you see. He's more a pound of flesh person, if you follow me. You don't mind if we look through your fine vehicle to see what we can make of it. <laughs> what the bloody hell? <laughs> Oi, what are you lot doing? It's just a bit of weather. Mr. Spittle, you uh, may want to keep an eye on the rooftops, if you please. <laughs> what? What is that? Nothing. The wind is a merry prankster. Please, don't shoot my Thomas! Ain't him I'm worried about. <laughs> what What are you waiting on? Get that thing! You look frightened, Michael. What's going on? I ain't afraid of nothing. Where are you lot going? Get back here! Mommy, I'm scared. Hush, Bruce. Stay close to me. Now, now. You stay right there, loves. Otherwise, I will show you how easy a man can break. Hello, Michael. Who's that? What? That voice. Right near me. A, a whisper in my ear. Michael, what are you doing? Where are you? Mr. Spittle, find her. <clears throat> Michael, leave these nice people alone. Get away from me, spirit. So confident you are. You didn't bring any extra bullets. Not that your weapons can harm me, Michael. How do you know me, Spirit? How do you... Every man has a song. I can hear yours. And once I hear your song... I know all I need about you. What? There you are. Just a common tramp. All fishnets and heels. What is he talking about? Martha, get Bruce into the car, quickly. You? How could you do all that to my boys? To Mr. Spittle? I choose to appear as you wish to see me, Michael McBrien. Not as I am. As for your boys, they succumbed to their own shame. They were shown a mirror to their own darkness, and they died from the weight of their shame. Would you like to see what's in the mirror for you? No. No. No! Get in the car. What's going what on? What is it, Thomas? I don't know. He went crazy, started talking to himself, and I... Who is that, Mommy? Who is... Oh! Goodness, she's an angel. Thomas and Martha Kane. Hello, Bruce. How... How do you know us? She's so beautiful. Thank you, Bruce. I am just a spirit. You don't have much time. I'm giving you the memory of how to get out of the city. It is the fastest route. Of course. Why couldn't I remember that? Three lefts and take the Gibson Street ramp to the bridge. I must have gotten turned around. Go. When you get to the end of the bridge, you will remember nothing of tonight. You will sleep well with fond memories of tonight. You will not remember me. Aww. You are so 
lovely. Your imagination is getting the better of you, Thomas. Think about your beautiful wife next to you. Go home and appreciate her and Bruce. I know you. I... I'm sure I've seen you before. It does not matter. You must forget. Now go before the mob returns. Go now and forget. Thank you, spirit. Thank you. Did you forget about me? What? <clears throat> Who is the spiritist Samaritan who saved the lives of the Kane family? Where did she come from, and what is her game? What's going to happen to her in the lecherous clutches of notorious gang leader Michael McBrien? Tune in tomorrow as Eagle Cigarettes brings you another chapter of Hidden Harbor Mysteries. Hidden Harbor Mysteries, Chapter 1, The Wrong Turn, was written by Jay Smith and produced by Brian Lincoln, with Dave Robinson as the narrator, Veronica Jaguer as the ghost, Rish Outfield as Michael, Brian Humphrey as Thomas, Lauren Harris as Martha, Renee Chambliss as Bruce, Alex White as Folsom, and Brian Lincoln as the affiliate announcer and Mr. Spittle. This podcast is released under Creative Commons Attribution, No Derivatives 4.0 License. Closing music is Here We Go Again for the First Time by Juicy Melon Jim. Visit our website at hiddenharbormysteries.com. This has been a Brian Lincoln production.